Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel Tintel, and I am the owner and designer behind The Creative Siren. So we are using this video this week to kind of kick off our monthly challenge that if you're in my Facebook group, you will know all about. So, and if you're not, you should totally join. So what we've been doing in my Facebook group is that I've been challenging um, our members to think outside of the box and meet the theme of the month. Um, and it's been going phenomenal and I'm so excited for this month. Last month we did villains and um, everyone did a fantastic job. So this week we're gonna switch gears because we're in this beautiful new month with this beautiful new season of spring. So we are going to do nature. And because we're doing nature, I am gonna teach you guys how to make a cactus mug. Now this guy was something, he's something that I've been wanting to do for like a little while. I mean, definitely a couple of months, if not longer. And I never had the motivation to do it until this challenge popped up. Um, but I also did it with a cute little twist. Oh my God, he's so cute. <laughs> I can't get over how cute this guy is. Um, so, I mean, obviously you guys can do it you know, the cutesy way, or you can leave it, you know, very true to form. Um, either which way, I will show you how to do both. Now, I'm really, really hoping that you guys take this video as inspiration to do your own nature tumbler or mug, post it in my group, and you know what? You never know, you might be this month's new winner. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. gonna start with is a fully prepped and sanded morning mug from the Steel Magnolia. Now you'll see here that I have the top taped but not the bottom and that's on purpose and you'll see why later. So the type of clay that I'm gonna be using is this lightweight uh, Sculpey clay. It honestly it feels like marshmallow fluff. I really love this stuff but it's about half the weight of regular polymer clay, which is gonna play a big part into this design. So here I'm cutting up the cube of polymer clay um, into one inch squares. You'll need anywhere between 10 to 12 of these, depending on um, how wide you make them on your cup. And we're gonna round them out. So just roll them out to whatever thickness that you prefer. Um, it's gonna sit about three and a half inches long if you tape off the top like I do. And what they're gonna end up looking is like lady fingers, you know, those, those cookies. <laughs> but that's what they look like. So you want them rounded at the top and don't worry if it drags out on the bottom there because we can cut off any excess. But round it out so that it's like long but then flat but also kind of domed. Um, just like a lady finger cookie. That's the best way that I can describe it. And then round out those edges that are connecting to the cup because you really wanna make sure that it, it adheres really well to that cup so it doesn't fall off later. And you're gonna repeat this whole process so that you have these lady fingers going around your entire cup and evenly spaced from each other. So here I'm just showing you how I roll it out in case um, for some reason you smashed up all of your clay and you don't have it in the nice little cubie like I did. Um, so I just roll it out to about a, a half an inch thickness and then I cut it at around three and a half inches. Again, if you're taping off the top like I do. So if you don't happen to, you know, aren't able to cut them into cubes like I did before, this is another way to measure just how much you'll need.
So after I've finished adding these ladyfinger like things all over my cup, I'm going to round out the bottom edge. And if there's any excess that continues to hang out, um, then I will go in with my X-Acto knife and clean it up. Once you're done cleaning up those bottom edges, go ahead and take the tape off the top and bake your clay according to the package directions. When your clay and cup are completely cooled, go ahead and roll out a piece of conditioned polymer clay and I'm going to drape it over the top of that um, lightweight clay that we've already added. Now this is about no thicker than a piece of paper. It's a really thin layer over the top, not so thin that it's really translucent. Um, and I'm gonna start my seam right underneath the handle. Um, that way you don't show too many harsh seam, seam lines if you just don't get it clean enough. Um, I just find that that's easier. Now gently press the clay down in between those lady fingers. Um, and you're gonna do that for each segment. This is just going to cast the overall body. And I like this technique because it gives a really nice outer silhouette to our cactus here without casting too many harsh lines. And if it helps, which I find that it helps for me, um, you can grab a silicone tool um, to really define those lines in between our lady fingers. Now, if you're having to add your clay like I do in segments here, go ahead and cut a straight line um, as close as you can to one of our little lady fingers here. And that way the seam will blend a lot better when you add that other segment. And then just cut off any excess uh, clay. So here I am going around the top because I really wanna keep that domed top um, for our cactus. Um, if you guys wanna go straight across, that's completely up to you. I just like the look of the doming. After you've cut off all the excess, go ahead and go in with your silicone tip tool and just round out those edges. Again, like we always say, you know, you don't want it looking like you just cut it off. You really want to round those out and give it more of a natural flowy look. And don't forget to cut around the handles. You don't want excess clay there. Don't worry too much if your clay is too far from the base of the handle because we are going to be covering this handle and it's going to look like, you know, part of the, the cactus there. So if it doesn't meet perfectly, you can always blend that in with your finger or with your silicone tip tool so that it looks nicer. And now we're just going to repeat the whole process. So where you're lining up your clay there, make sure that it is a clean seam. So go in with your X-Acto knife and make sure that that seam is as straight as possible. That way when you go in to blend it, you're not dealing with a whole bunch of excess clay. So it's a little hard to see, but what I'm doing here is I'm cutting off and a little bit of the excess clay that's flapping over that first bit of clay that we put in and I'm blending it out. Um, don't worry if you leave fingerprints because we can always go back in with a little bit of rubbing alcohol to really smooth all of that out. 
Now let's work on the handle. So I just rolled out a piece of conditioned clay here and I'm just covering it. I'm not really adding, you know, um, a lot of width to this handle. I'm just covering the handle as is and I'm doing it in two segments. So the top part and the bottom part. The top part is not really important as far as how long you wanna make it um, because you can cut off the, the end bit there. Um, but when it comes to the bottom, I found that anywhere between three and a half to four inches is about the perfect length. And as you can see here, I'm cutting off those top corners just because it fits a little bit nicer um, between those lady fingers or those barbs of our cactus. and then just blend those pieces together. Now when you have your cup fully covered, go ahead and go in with a Q-tip or just your finger and a little bit of rubbing alcohol to take out any dings, any nail marks or any fingerprints, any blemishes that you just don't want showing up on your cup after you baked it. Once you've gotten all of those blemishes out, go ahead and let your clay dry. And when it's fully dry, bake the whole thing according to the packaging on your clay. When your clay has cooled um, from coming out of the oven, we're just gonna go ahead and paint it. Now here I am painting it with Apple Barrel's Crisp Green. As you can see here, it's just a really nice, bright and vibrant green. Um, and that's just going to be the base of our entire cactus. Paint everything that you want to be you know, part of the cactus. And you're probably gonna go over this anywhere between two to three times to make sure that you have a good solid color. Now here is where it might get a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna add a little bit of shading and highlights to our cactus. So I'm using Lime Tree, crisp green and English ivy green for uh, this look. So what I'm gonna do is each one of these lady fingers, I'm gonna go one at a time. So I'm gonna paint the whole thing in crisp green. Then I'm gonna wipe off my brush with my little you know, paint rag here. I'm gonna go back in with the lime tree and just do the very top and then for the last time, go in with the English ivy green, which is like this really pretty deep green, and go down into the crevices. Now wet your brush here and blend. Um, and that's just gonna create a really nice dynamic where you've got highlights and low lights on each part of your cactus. And you're just gonna go through and do that on each one of these barbs, or as I keep calling them, these lady fingers, because that's what they look like to me. Um, and just do that over and over. This paint, because it's acrylic, it will dry pretty quick, so it's really important to make sure that your brush is damp. And of course, you can always go in and add more highlights or more lowlights. Um, and if you find that maybe it's too much dark green or too much of the light green, then you go back in with your crisp green, which is our base for our whole thing, and um, just add a little bit more of that. So once you're done doing your highlights and your lowlights, you're gonna go back in with a little bit of your English Ivy, and I'm just grabbing a ball tool. This is one that I usually use for my dots. It's the same one that I use for my Ursula cup. And we're just gonna add dots down these barbs or these lady fingers. And do your best to do it right down the center and pretty equal distant from each other. And then once you've done one, you can kind of reference it and then do the same on the other. So you know whereabouts to put them, so at least they're um, even. Now once your dots are all dried, you can go back in and add um, the little spikes for our cactus. So I'm using the color Antique White and just a fine detailing um, paintbrush. 
and I'm just doing it in pairs of three. You can do these any which way. I just thought it was cute to do it in pairs of three. Honestly, it looks like little chicken feet to me or like little bird feet, um, but I think it gives it a, a really cute look. So here I'm gonna show you really quick how I do the little cactus flower. So I'm just gonna take these little pea-sized bits of conditioned clay and I'm going to use about five of them. So each one will be a petal for our cactus flower. And then take one more small little piece and make sure, I mean, it's only about a fourth of the size of the rest of them because that's gonna be the middle of your cactus flower. So take each one of your petals and just form it into like a, a teardrop almost. And then I'm taking my needle tool and just dragging it from the top down to the bottom just to create a crease. And I repeat that for all five petals. Now once you've finished making your petals, you're just gonna grab them and put them around each other and form them in the shape of a flower. And just press them against each other ever so slightly so not to leave too many impressions. And then take that smaller bit and then press it in the middle. Really easy peasy. Now here, if you would like to, you can take a very small ball tool and just add texture to the middle of your flower. And when you're done with that, go ahead and place it where you'd like on your little cactus. Now, I didn't show it here, but I did later um, add some liquid Sculpey to make sure that that really adhered to my uh, cup, because um, you really don't want that falling off later. Now for the face. So just take a little bit of conditioned clay and roll it out. Now I'm gonna use my roller here and just press it into my clay. You can use anything that's small and round like that. Um, and this is gonna form our eyes. Now here I didn't do a very clean cut, so I'm just patting down the edges for any excess clay that's there. Now use your super, or your liquid Sculpey rather, and just put a tiny, tiny little bit on the back. I actually added a little bit too much, um, so I divided it between both my little eyes. And then you'll wanna make sure that one of your little lady fingers or your little barbs there um, stands between the eyes. You don't want them too close together but you wanna make sure that they are even on there. Now here I'm just rolling out a little piece of clay and this is going to form the smile. So I'm just cutting off a tiny little piece. It's probably about half an inch, maybe three fourths of an inch. Um, and that's gonna be our smile. And again, you are gonna want a little bit of liquid Sculpey. And I tell you this because your clay isn't gonna stick very well um, to your acrylic paint. So uh, you're gonna you're gonna have a little bit of trouble if you don't have this liquid Sculpey to attach it. Now for the last little bit, I'm just taking a pea-sized bit of clay and I'm dividing it in two and creating two little ovals. Now these are gonna be like the little cheeks of our cactus if you decide to add a face. And again, just the tiniest little bit of liquid Sculpey and attach it right underneath the eyes. Once you finish adding all of these pieces, go ahead and bake your face um, because after which we're gonna paint it and you'll wanna make sure that those are really stuck on there when it's time for painting. When your cup is completely cooled and out of the oven, we're gonna go ahead and start painting our face. So I'm just gonna go in with a black, and this is just the basic black that I get from Apple Barrel, um, and we're gonna paint the eyes and the mouth black. Don't forget to get those edges because you will see this through epoxy. So any clay that is white or the skin colored that, I mean, if you can turn your cup to the side and you can see it, it'll show even with the epoxy. So very gently with a fine detailing brush, do your best to paint all of the showing clay.
Now for the cheeks here, I'm painting it with Candy Pink by Apple Barrel, and this is just like a really bright, um, bright, almost neon pink, and that's why I loved it. It looked almost cartoony. Now for the flower here, I decided to go in with Purple Iris to paint the flower, and um, Bright Yellow, both by Apple Barrel, and the bright yellow is gonna go right in the center. So when your pieces are all dry, we're gonna grab a ball tool, and this is a smaller ball tool, and we're just gonna add a little bit of twinkle to our cactus's eyes. So grab the larger end, and we're gonna do one big dot, and then two smaller dots on the outside. Now my best advice for this is to go and pick one corner of the eye. So on both of them, either do both the left corner or both the right corner. Um, on my first cactus that I did it, I did one on either corner. So the left eye had the left corner and the right eye had the right outer corner or something like that. And it actually just made them look cross-eyed. So you do really want to make sure that they're in the same direction. So because of the shape of this guy, you're probably going to have paint on the top rim of your cup. Um, just because we can't really tape this off. So here's two ways that we can take um, this paint off. So you can very gently go in with your hobby knife and very, very gently scrape off that paint. You'll wanna make sure that you're going with the grain of the cup so you don't have these obscure scratches going in the opposite direction. Or you can go in with a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol and clean all of that up. Personally, I like to kind of mix and match and I do a little bit of both but find what works for you. Once you're all done cleaning up those edges, I like to tape right above the cactus and then we're gonna go ahead and hit it with a little bit of epoxy. Now like we do with all of our 3D cups, we're going in with a very light coat, but you're gonna have to pay a little bit more attention here because you wanna make sure that you're covering each one of those crevices. Um, and the domes over the top. Um, you don't really wanna miss any bit of that. And then pay special attention, of course, to the handle and um, to the flower, actually. Make sure you get some epoxy underneath there so that it adheres really well. And then when you're done doing that, just hit it really quick with a heat gun just to pop any bubbles that may show up. Thank you guys so much, as always, for joining me for this video. Um, I really hope that you love it, and I can't wait to see all of your cute little cactus friends. If you love this video, be sure to click here to see our last video. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another tutorial. See you later. Bye!